to those that booked and look at this a full house well done guys isn't it good to get together and praise the Lord together I just want to welcome Pastor Tasha and Tanya this morning I want to welcome Jack and Anneli our special friends and Edith over there our special friends and then I see a lot of people that I haven't seen since March, or even earlier, or maybe even since last year, I think of Rudy up there, and um, Jordan Arena's girls, lovely to see you, I haven't seen you since lockdown began, yeah, and there's quite, quite a few others, I don't want to, it's nice to see Doc here, yeah, amen. Hi Doc. So, yeah, I see that, I see that hand, Deborah. <laughs> about the birthdays. I've got it here, I've got it out of control. <laughs> yeah. So, please feel welcome. What do you think of this place? Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> After 18 years, we finally have our own building. And the Lord says, do not despise small beginnings. <coughs> Okay, you think after 18 years, why must we go back to small beginnings? But God, God's got a plan in this, doesn't he? So we, we are so grateful to the Lord for this place, his provision, and his blessing upon us. And um, I'm excited to get the offices sorted out and the kitchen sorted out. And, and soon we, we will be able to, we're just waiting for um, our president's speech and then Perhaps we can serve tea afterwards. Who knows? The sky's the limit, isn't it? So feel welcome this morning. Relax, and I'm looking forward to my husband's word. I know it's going to be powerful and anointed. And Amen. I'm trusting that even the neighbors are going to be touched by his word. They might not hear it, but they're going to feel the spirit as it moves out into the highways and the byways. Amen. So apparently, Leo, you had birthday last week. Jerome. Oh my goodness, Jerome. <laughs> 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 you know what you look like? You look like one of the old members. Mickey and Mickey. One of the old members. Mickey and Never mind. It's a Sansima. Has anyone else had a birthday within this last week? Or is anybody having a birthday between today and next Saturday? Anybody? No? You. Come. God, hallelujah, hallelujah, bless the Lord. Folks, um, I know we've got one or two visitors today, but if it's going to carry on like this, we're going to have to go from next week to two services, okay? Because in the interest of social distancing, we don't want to get into trouble. Um, we'll just tell the police this was a very special day today, but... Um, uh, please book so that we can see uh, how we're doing and then we can uh, go to two or three or five services. I'm ready for five services, one after the next. I tell you what happened last week by the third service I was so on fire I nearly got raptured. Uh, come to the last service, uh, it'll be good. So folks, um, I know church normally finishes at a certain time and then we have coffee, so there's no coffee today. So just 
be gracious with me and give me a few extra minutes. Is that okay? Because I want to put first things first, important things where they're supposed to be. And so uh, Edith doesn't know this, I haven't asked her, but I'm going to uh, drop this one in her lap. Edith, come and just greet the people. Uh, as a messianic believer, we're so uh, excited to have you with us today. Uh, and just say a, a, a word or say a prayer or whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Come on, my sister. Kilograms ago. <laughs> 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 so stand right in the middle here, yeah, then you're on the camera. Um, thank the Lord for Zoom. That Zoom just doesn't cut it. Nah. It's the best. So thank you, Lord. Um, I don't know that I have any special word, but. Um, say a word of blessing over I'll the say place a word then. Of blessing. Father God, we just thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness. We thank you for keeping each one of us. And Lord, um, we just pray your blessing, your anointing on this venue, on everything that takes place here, the worship, the, the preaching, everything, Lord. That indeed, as Rona said, this is going to go out like sound waves traveling that will touch this neighborhood, Lord, and impact it and transform people. And Lord, we pray for seven services a day. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. And then the next one I'm going to spring it on is my good friend Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Such a surprise, that's why I've got a jacket on, right? <laughs> First of all, Nick, just to congratulate you. This is so wonderful, really. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited for Keep Church. 18 years in a school hall. That's faithfulness. Faithfulness. And God will honor that. I'm absolutely sure of that. Amen. Amen. So, wow. I'm going to study the Feast of Tabernacles that just finished. And the word that, that we received for that for this season is that word in Isaiah 43. And it so fits what's happening here this morning. Look, I am doing a new thing. Amen. Wow. <laughs> so this is a new thing. And it goes further on to say that the new thing is, like Trevor just sang in this wonderful worship this morning here. Yeah? I don't know what church was here before, but I don't think the worship was like this. <laughs> this worship was amazing. It's on fire. Amen. <laughs> but it goes further to say, what is the new thing? The new thing is that I'm going to bring rivers in the desert. Amen. I'm going to bring living water. Amen. And I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh. Amen. And you know, in Acts 2 that happened. But this is for the last days. There is a new anointing, a bigger anointing. And it's coming not in the normal places. God said he's going to be in the dry beds where there's nothing. Where there's nothing. That's where the living water is going to flow like rivers. And you know, I think this is a word for us today that we're going to go out and take this living water to those dry places. God is opening up people's hearts that have never, never, never been to church before. In the dry places He's going to bring it. He's bringing the word to Israel. The Messianic believers are growing. He's bringing the word to the dry places of Islam. A million people in Pakistan the other day at a big gathering for God and for Jesus. Amazing. This is a new thing. So key church is just in a key place at the right time. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Jack. Hallelujah.
praise God. And then last but not least, Pastor Tashus, come and say a word. Church. It's good to be here. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Nick once again? Um, I really believe this, uh, this is a, uh, a key uh, a red letter day in heaven. And I believe God's, this is a beginning. Like the woman of God said, never despise a day of small beginnings. This might be a small beginning, but it's a very significant, a very key moment on the calendar of heaven this morning. Uh, when I feel, I feel the anointing, I feel the presence of God. And, and like the man of God just said, the worship and praise was just out of this world. When, when you feel that you can connect in worship and in praise, then you, then you must know the Holy Spirit is here. And where the Holy Spirit is, anything can happen, and it probably will. Amen. And so it's really an honor, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, Pastor Nick invited me via WhatsApp voice note. And uh, I didn't reply by a voice note, I just messaged him. And while I said, yes, we will come and support you, man of God, the Lord laid a verse upon my heart and I gave it to him. And it was Isaiah 60 verse 1 where it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For gross, dense darkness shall cover the earth. How many of you know that's a Amen. already? Gross, dense darkness is covering the earth. But upon you, the light of the glory of the Lord shall be seen. I believe upon the man of God, upon the woman of God, upon this church, the light of the glory of God shall be seen upon this church, upon you, upon your family, upon your household. Grace things God is on top of this earth. The virus, I mean, corona, whatever uh, thing is out there, it's dark, it's, it's, it's desolate, it's dry. But we need the river of the presence of God. We need the anointing. We need the unction of the Holy Spirit in our lives to break open what God has promised for His church. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. And I'm looking Amen. forward to the word. Thank, Thank you, Pastor Nick. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Folks, before Tash just leaves, because he was teasing me, he might leave early. Because I went to his opening and I was forced to leave early. And so he said, if he leaves a bit early, you know, I must just expect it. So, if he slips out the back there, somebody lock that gate, okay? But jokes aside, uh, Tashus, maybe you can preach for us next Sunday morning. I would love that. If you're free, let me know. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. What's the matter? The, the offering. Uh, that's why I need a secretary, you see, because I would just forget it. Praise God. Folks, let me just give you a testimony before we take the offering. God has been so good to the key church. So good to the key church. You know, uh, many churches over this time couldn't fully pay their pastors. Rona and I want to tell you that we've been paid every month on time. Every rent has been paid. Everything that needed to be paid was paid. And the deposit on this place was two months, uh, was equal to two months rent plus the first month up front plus a thousand rands uh, for drawing up the lease, came to 49,000 rands. We paid it in cash, no trouble. Because God is good to us. And so, thank you to you guys that have just been so faithful. Uh, even when there's no real church going on, you're paying your tithes and doing what needs to be done. And God bless you for that. So folks, uh, right now we're going to take up the offering. Um, where's the nice uh, mic? Why don't you just uh, pick that up and hold it? Uh, if, if you guys can just come forward and bring your offering because it is Tithe Sunday. Lord, we just hold this offering up to you. And we give you all the honor and the praise and the thanks and the glory. And we pray that you would bless it, Lord Jesus. That uh, give us wisdom to use your money in a faithful and responsible manner and bless your people for giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, it can stay there, Deborah. Are you you're going to count it now? Okay. Okay. 
She's organized. Bless the Lord. And then just lock it in the boot of somebody's car. Puss. Your car? Okay. Okay. I'm so glad Edith is here today because I'm going to use a Hebrew word and I'm going to damage it severely. And, and so uh, you need to be ready to whip that mask off and just say it properly for me, okay? Okay, so let's get into the Word of God. Last week's Torah portion, it was powerful. It was about the story of Noah. Who was blessed by last week's uh, a man that blessed me? And so last week was called Parashat Noah, okay? This week's Torah portion is about Abraham, and it's called Lech Lecha. Is that all right? Lech Lecha. Okay. So does Lech Lecha and the story of Abraham have any relevance for the church today? That's a question, but I'm not looking for an answer, because I'm going to answer it myself. The literal translation for Lech Lecha is go from, as in Abraham, go find yourself, go from, okay? Well, anyway, that's what the rabbi said. So, if I haven't got it right, send a letter to my rabbi. <laughs> we in the church might be more familiar with exactly the same translation is follow me. It's go from, follow me, they interchange that. So let's go to Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourselves. You must take up your cross and follow me. Or take up your cross and lech lecha. Go from where you're at, in other words. So why was Abram so special that he was chosen? Because who of you would like to be a modern day Abram? Man, Abraham was blessed of God. Wouldn't you like to be blessed like Abraham was? Well, I don't know if it's even possible Abraham was so blessed. But it's the same God, the same Jesus, the same Holy Spirit. So Acts 10.34 says, And Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Folks, that's in the Bible. God is no respecter of persons. So was he a respecter of Abraham and not of you? Or what's happening here? And it goes on in verse 35. But in every nation, he that, number one, feareth him, and number two, worketh righteousness, is acceptable to him. So there's two preconditions. You want to know... God, why you bless Abraham so much and I'm still struggling along here? He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is acceptable to him. Folks, this is good news. I'm bringing you the gospel of good news this morning. If we fear God and we live righteously, we can expect great blessings just like Abraham did. Who wants to be blessed? Who, who wants God's hand upon your life? I want to tell you this morning, God wants to bless you. I was very disappointed this year. I had three trips lined up. One to Turkey with Joy Magazine uh, and my regular Israel trip. And another one with the church from Desire for All Nations. And then the pastor from All Nations who uh, was organizing their one. Uh, and we were going to go to the Knesset to deliver the uh, ambulance motorbike that they saved up for. I was so excited about this, I can't tell you. And it all fell through and that dear pastor went and died of COVID. It was very impolite of him. Uh, uh, I wasn't very happy with him. But, uh, you know, life happens, folks. So all three trips are cancelled. But God knows my heart. God knows the things that I love. Uh, and things that, uh, you know, we're all different. Everybody's different. Maybe you are blessed by something different than what would bless me. But we all uh, would like to be blessed. We'd all like God to put favor on our life. Uh, and God, who made me, knows exactly the desires of my heart. 
like none of you could ever begin to guess because God knows me so Thursday Thursday as in what's it three days back or whatever is my maths good um, Israel launched a new cutting-edge virtual tour because you cannot currently tour Israel and so what they do is they have cameras and computers and they input uh, one of the areas um, and they've been doing it all across Israel as it so happens that Thursday they did Caesarea and so you go on a zoom meeting with one of the top Israeli tour guides and um, she will walk you through the place and she is showing you things and talking about it and there's little things that you can click on that opens up that shows you a picture gives a description and if you get tired of following her you can go off on a rabbit, rabbit trail with your own mouse and then when she sees too many people are wandering away she just clicks again and you all come back together it's incredible technology never been used uh, like this before anywhere in the world very first time this product gets used and so Israel needs to test the system and so they want a tour uh, leader and a tour guide and so guess who they ask Nikki Kriya, Republic of South Africa, Deep River or Plumstead, Cape Town I, I want to tell you guys you can't make this sort of stuff up God ordained this when I met that tour leader the last uh, time in Israel and um, she took us around Israel and at the end of the tour she said she's worked with hundreds of pastors over her career and Nikki Kriya was the best tour uh, leader that she's ever worked with wow. and, and that's how it comes about when she wants to test the new system and she gets chosen because she's very good I told everybody Sharon Peleg is very good at what she does she's got uh, master's degrees and all sorts of things uh, she's brilliant at what she does and so who would she choose to, to co-host this thing with her but Nikki Kriya in Cape Town there were many pastors from America on, on the thing with us there was people from all around the world on this thing but all of their microphones were muted except Pastor Nikki Kriya because he's co-host and, uh, and she's asking me questions all the time and uh, Matt, th you know if you had to do that some of you might feel anxious to do something like that you don't understand uh, Doc you were there you saw it was it good? Fantastic. Amen <laughs> I loved every moment of it and I'm telling you you can't make this stuff up if God decides to give you favor I mean South Africa is insignificant in the greater scheme of things most of the big tours come from America where they got dollars but they asked Nikki Kriya in South Africa I, I want to tell you why because God is good to me Amen. he's been good to me if you will serve him he will make a way for you you might be facing challenges this morning it doesn't matter he has already he goes ahead he goes before he planned this thing uh, two years ago already he's putting things because God knows your end from your beginning and sometimes it feels like you're down to nothing but God is up to something God knows you and he wants to bless you even your most secret desires I didn't even know I had a desire to host the tour of Israel on virtual reality but I loved it so let's go back to see what set Abraham apart and folks I was studying many things that the rabbis were saying but uh, we don't want to get into all of those things today let me ask you this is not a typical church but what do you call the front 
area of a church. Um, anybody? Sorry? Uh, yeah, now you're getting very, uh, you're showing your roots, my sister. It can be Baptist, Baptist. <laughs> Any, uh, there, who, who said that? Ah, okay, that's, that's what I like to hear. We call this an altar, isn't that? And uh, folks, I, I haven't forgotten about Abraham when I'm talking about altar here. Abraham built an altar, didn't he? So we say, come to the altar. Don't we say that in church? Yes. Come to the altar, come and receive a blessing. Come and we'll pray for you. Abraham built an altar. Can I be so bold as to say the church worldwide has no cooking clue what an altar is? And that leads to a modern gospel that has no power. Abraham understood an altar is not the place you go to get, but the place you go to give. Abraham was the wealthiest man in the world. God gave him plenty because he made an altar. But the mindset must be right. You can't, I'm going to the altar to receive. And we, the pastors, the churches, we've taught the stuff. Come, And it's not wrong, folks. It's not wrong. You do receive a blessing. Abraham did receive a lot. But the mindset... Uh, in the church today is give me, give me, my name is Jimmy, you know, it's just the saying, but it's like I need something from God so I'm going to go to the altar, that's not what altar means, altar means it's a place where you go to give, now I'm starting to talk about covenant because when you get into covenant, it's a great exchange. You see, people come to the altar and they say, Lord, I need this, I need that. But what are you bringing? There's an exchange. Something has to happen. If you just coming to the altar just to receive, you know what you're going to receive is nothing. Because you have to bring when you go to the altar. And Abraham held back nothing. Nothing absolutely nothing and we hold back so much and then we say where's God he doesn't come through for me but we're busy holding back I, I love what happens in China when the, they take up the offering and some people have no money but they're just so desperate to give that they come and they stand in that offering basket and say I give myself I give myself away I give myself to Jesus. Folks, it's that type of sacrificial living. Sacrifice, altar, these words go together. And I'm not saying you can't come forward for a blessing. And if you have a need, you can't come. It's all true. But the church has overemphasized the one and neglected the other. That when you come forward and you say, Lord, I give myself away. I give my life to you. It's, it's been the battle of my life. I think you people know the story of how God called me into the ministry from the age of 18. And I fled from that. I didn't want to do it. But eventually, I came to my senses. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just throw it in by the by. This church was a new apostolic church. They sold this church to buy my grandfather's church down the road that I wouldn't take. And I didn't want. And so God said, we'll send you full circle, Nikki. We send you to the church that was sold by the people who saw the value in what you didn't. Okay, let's move on. Matthew 10, 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. That's so key. He that loseth his life 
for my sake shall find it. Folks, God is setting up an altar this morning, but this is a, this is a good altar. This is not a, what can I get from God? This is a, how can I give myself to God? It's the best thing that you can do with your life. Don't think that God wants to take your Isaac from you. What is your Isaac? I don't know what your Isaac is. But God is not looking to take anything from you. Yes, He will test you like He tested Abraham. Will you sacrifice Isaac? He just wants to see what's in your heart. He never ever intended for Isaac to be slaughtered on the altar. But he did want to see if Abraham would go all in, flat out, full out for God. And, and Abraham passed the test, didn't he? He passed the test. Isn't it incredible? What an incredible man he was. May I be more like Abraham, that when God asks something of me, it will be, yes, Lord, yes. But today it's not just for me. This word is for me and for you. Will you say, yes, Lord, yes. So we have many altar calls. Come and uh, get blessed by the man of God. And next week that man of God that everybody was so enamored with is getting divorced. You know, it's what's happening in the world today. It's not about coming forward to get a touch on your forehead by the man of God. And I love that sort of stuff, folks. I'll do all that sort of stuff because it's all true and it's, uh, it's real and it's God. But can we go deeper? Can we come forward because we say, Lord, here I am. It's you and me. It's you and me today. It's just you and me. Hallelujah. My friend David Clement will remember my other friend William Mitchell. Do you remember William Mitchell, David? You remember what he used to like to say of you? Frek gaat jy frek, maar jy gaat frek, my bro. I'm not, gonna I'm not even going to try and translate that for those of you. That's a, he was talking about being on the altar. You've got to die to self. And, and poor David, he used to say it all the time to you, hey Dave? I mean, he said it to me uh, as well, but I, I think he said it a lot to you. Frek gaat jy frek, maar jy gaan frek, my broer. See, I can still talk a little bit of Afrikaans. Folks, when you come to God, you must believe. You must believe. Hebrews 11.6 And without faith, it's impossible to be well-pleasing unto Him. And he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is the rewarder of them that seek after Him. He's the rewarder. When, when you put your life on the altar, you see, uh, can I be perfectly honest with you? I wouldn't have chosen this church, this, this building. I might have chosen the three arts, because I think I'll look better at the front of the three arts <laughs> than here. But God knows what we need. God knows better than us. And, and we are interested in flashy and big stuff. But God not so interested in who's the big shot. God likes the little shots, the average Joe, because then he gets all the glory. Because he comes and he takes uh, Joe average and he makes him supernatural, powerful, because of the Holy Ghost, because of the anointing, not because of gifting. I've seen so many gifted, gifted, wonderful people that I stand in awe at how they can preach. But then I go to their home and I say, Lord Jesus, thank you for my life. If you're seeking reward from God, if that's your motive in coming to the altar, you're not going to find it. 
But if you lay your life at the altar, the place of sacrifice, the reward will be eternal. I'm talking about eternal rewards this morning, folks. Not just for the next week, the next month, the next year. I'm talking about an eternal reward. But we get saved because we don't want to go to hell. You know, we, that's maybe a good place to start. You've got to start somewhere. But can we get off the milk of starting and get into the meat of actually you come to God to put your life on the altar? As Abram held back nothing, gave his best offering. And God said, no man, what? What? Stop. Stop, Abraham. Stop. I don't need your son. I've prepared a ram. And there the ram was stuck in the thickets. Church, folks, is serious business. It's not a bless me club, but a laying down of your rights club. If you want to join a club, that's what it is. Laying down of your rights. Abraham fell on his face before God. We don't like to fall on our face. And folks, there's not really space for you all to fall on your face today. So, I'm not saying that, but I'm just telling you. Say, why? Surely you must be interested. Why did God choose Abraham to bless him to that extent? Don't you want to be blessed? Well, then you've got to do some of the things that Abraham did. Abraham was not ashamed to fall on his face with reverential fear before God. It's about attitude in the church. You know, today people leave the church because the pastor forgot to greet them. Lord have mercy. You think I'm joking? My poor grandmother was always in trouble. She was the pastor's wife, and she was a very intense person in many ways. Not my mother is very laid back. She took off to her father. My grandmother was on a mission to win souls and to preach the gospel. And uh, she was on fire for God. And, and she wasn't so good at this going to greet everybody like my grandfather did. No, she's, she spotted somebody there that needs prayer and she's going there with blinkers on. She's not even going to see you. And then my poor grandfather must go visit the people in the week and say, sorry that Kathy didn't greet you. Can I change your nappy? Can I wipe your nose? That's church and it's still like that today, folks. Can I tell you a little secret? My job is not to greet you, it's to circumcise your flesh. And Lord have mercy when I try and circumcise somebody's flesh. Have you ever heard when you try and slaughter a pig out can squeal? <laughs> Jack Blake knows about slaughtering pigs. His father was the king of slaughtering pigs. Shame his dad helped us move most of the stuff that is here on Friday. Tell him we appreciate it, Jack. He was a blessing to me. He was a captain in the police force and he, uh, he's a wonderful guy. He came and he helped me. Praise God. Abraham understood covenant. Covenant is about exchange. If you won't give God your belt, he's not going to give you his. If you won't give God your shield, he's not going to give you his. It's an exchange. The, the two pass. Praise God. Sarai meant princess to Abraham. Sarai was Abraham's princess. But God called her Sarah. He added the H on, which meant princess to the whole world. That's when you get into covenant. That's when God 
starts to expand your world view. God didn't only want to bless Abraham, he wants to bless you. He wants to bless me. He wants to do good things for you just as he wants to do good things for me. But it's a great exchange. If you don't give him your two pennies, he's not going to give you his silver and gold. But if you'll take the little bit that you got and say, God, this is all I got, but I give it to you. You say, wow. I, I got that stuff for plenty here. We use that for gravel. I, I, and this is what I want for my life, is to just have that attitude towards God. That nothing that I have belongs to me, but it all belongs to Him. And you watch this space. If this pastor isn't triple blessed, did you restart, Sharon? Praise God. At least we're doing good there. Abram understood covenant. Abram left a great legacy. Maybe legacy is not so important to you. You think, well, when I'm dead, I'm dead. Like, frek gaat je frek, maar je gaat frek. Uh, but what about your legacy? Maybe you're not worried about your legacy. I want to ask you, what is your legacy? What legacy? If you look at the story of Lot, Abraham's nephew, he wanted the best in life. Abraham and Lot stood on the plains of Israel and they looked out across the land. And Abraham said to his nephew, My, it was my nephew, I'll slap him behind the ear. You have that little hooky over there. What do you think? You're just a nephew. ex um. Okay? Abram was the least. He said, Lot, you choose. You know, Lot chose the most fertile. He chose where there were houses built of stone. And Abraham said, it's alright. I'll take this desert area here. Where it looks like there's nothing going on but me and God we got something going here I'll live in a tent you know we, we're so impressed by the cars people drive I'll tell you a story uh, you want to know why I drive a Mercedes for your sake for your sake I enjoy it but God doesn't care whether I drive a bicycle or a Mercedes. It makes no difference to him. He's not going to bless me more because I drive a Mercedes. If I drive, ride a bicycle and I love God, he's going to bless me. But Rona used to take one of our daughters, I think it was Robin, to dancing. For about a year, she was taking, and shame up, Poor Sherrod looked a little bit like a Toyota does today. It was starting to fade. And she'd sit and wait in the car. And not one person would greet her. She'd just sit there. She's, you know, she's uh, quite happy with her own company. But some of the ladies would get out of their land cruises and chat and whatnot. And they'd form a little circle there. They never included her. And so then I bought her a 7 Series BMW. And the next week she rocked up with her lung slap VIT 7 Series BMW. And all the ladies came over and they knocked on the window. And said, we'd like to introduce ourselves to you. Folks, that's human nature. You see, we don't value a person by who they are. We value with our eyes. Lot wanted the best in life. He valued with the eye. Abraham valued with the heart. Lot lived in a beautiful stone house. But I've been to Lot's house. Anybody else been to Lot's house? It's just rubble. I tell you that whole area. <laughs> There's no more Lot's house. <laughs> 
It's the most arid desert you've seen in your life. It's just rocks and salt, Dead Sea salt. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 But the Lord told him Samuel, don't think Elab is the one just because he's tall and handsome. He isn't the one I've chosen. People judge others by what they look like. But I judge people by what's in their heart. And right now, the Holy Spirit is in this place. The Holy Spirit is hovering through you. And He's not judging you by how well you dress. He's not judging you by how handsome you are or how smart you are. He's judging you by your heart. Do you have a heart for Him? A heart to serve Him? A heart to sacrifice? Today is about an altar. It's about a sacrifice. It's about understanding that uh, uh, if it was up to me, I might have chosen the biggest church in Plumstead and I would have been very happy. But God doesn't judge as man judges. God judges our heart. And so, Lord, this morning I bring my heart before you. My heart condition. The many times you've asked me to do things and I said no. As if you can say no to God. This morning, Lord Jesus, I, I just want to say that I love you and I give you my heart. I give you my everything. I, I don't want to judge you, God, on what I have or what I don't have. I want to be a bit like Job, who said, though you smite me, I will not curse you. So easy when things go wrong, we curse God. We blame God. You might not outright curse God, but you get angry with God. You know, okay, let me tell you one more story and then I'm going to close. About eight months ago, this place went on the market. And David and Karen spotted it and they phoned me and I phoned the next morning to find out and they said you've just missed it it went yesterday guys you were one day late if you'd found a day earlier we would have got this place nearly a year ago and then you know what happened two or three weeks later COVID lockdown and this place stood empty for eight months while another pastor had to pay the rent God protected me we would have paid the rent for eight months in this place. But I'll be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed with God. I said, God, this is our area and you let some other pastor from retreat spot this before me. I had a discussion with God. We do talk to each other like that. I said, I'm a bit disappointed, Lord. God smiled. He said, you idiot. I'm busy looking out for you. Busy looking out for you. God is good. God is good all the time. If you will serve Him, He will come through for you in every area of your life. Uh, we don't even really have space to take an altar call here. But I, I want to take an altar call right where you're sitting. Won't you rededicate your heart right now to God? Just say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord, I acknowledge that most of the problems in my life are self-inflicted. And I get disappointed so quickly with you when things don't go the way I want them to. But you know much better than me. Just in the quietness of this moment. Speak to God in the quietness of your heart. 
rededicate. Lord, as I dedicate this building to you today, we want to dedicate more than a building. We want to dedicate our hearts to you. To put you first. To serve you first. We don't understand some of the journey you've taken us on. It's been tough and it's been hard. And we've questioned why you would possibly... Because you know the end from the beginning and you know what you're about to do. God hasn't forgotten you. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because I'll get a very good altar call. But if anybody felt like God's forgotten them a little bit, God's disappointed them a little bit, man, grow up, grow up, grow up. David was the shepherd boy. David was looking after the sheep. God had to speak to Samuel, the, the man of God. Samuel was the man of God. The, what a wonderful man. But Samuel looked at, the, uh, at Elab, the brother, and thought, Wow, this must be him. What a handsome, what a good dude. But God said, no, no, no. It's not about the trappings. It's not about those things. It's about the heart. And David had a heart after God. Will you develop a heart after God? Will you be a part of this church and not want to leave every time pastor doesn't greet you because I'm not here to greet you I like to greet you but sometimes I'm like my grandmother I'm distracted I'm busy I'm in a rush because the projector didn't want to work this morning I had to quickly rush and get more batteries and then people want to greet me and they wonder why I'm running past them because I want to start on time with the projector working and my mind is full of things don't leave because the pastor forgot to greet you I'm not supposed to be the greeter we can appoint somebody else to do that I'm supposed to cut your flesh circumcise you And today I want to circumcise your heart. To say put God first in spite of everything that didn't work. Maybe just the way you wanted it to. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. God's got this. I was disappointed when I didn't go to Israel. God had it. God knew Nikki. You'll be the very first when we do the Zoom. God has ways and means of exalting you when you stop trying to exalt yourself. And you allow yourself to be humbled. If you allow yourself to submit, you lower your self-esteem to let esteem others greater than yourself. Then God says, I will esteem you before man. I will esteem you before man. Won't you stand with me please, folks? Just for one minute. Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues for one minute. And then I'm going to close. Just pray in tongues for one minute. If you can't pray in tongues, pray in English. Come on, you guys, you can do better than that. I want to bring down heaven because I know there's people being touched by this word and they need uh, to have this word sealed in their hearts. That we'll stop being islands on our own and we'll fit in and we'll serve God with all of our heart. We'll come to the altar not to receive but to give. Not what can we get out of the church, but what can we bring to the church. Not complaining about the worship because it didn't suit you this morning or that morning. The worship is not to you, the worship is to God. And we'll do the best that we can with what we've got.
Rebascende, rebebebehe, rebebebe serebendo, robo sorbondo, roshere yendere, regagaga sarabaha, rembe rebebebe serebendo, robo shere yende, rebe sereyendo. Lord, I release your blessing. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to show favor towards your people as they've yielded their hearts to you this morning. Be gracious to your people and give them your shalom. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Folks, God bless you. Thank you for coming. And I hope to see most of you next week. God bless you.